stopping by my channel. If you did before you leave, please consider if you like my content, like, share, subscribe. When I get to 100 subscribers at my expense, I'm going to pick one lucky subscriber and send you a brand new uh, kitchen gadget, my favorite kitchen gadget that I absolutely cannot live without. All right. To all my Canadian friends, happy May 2 4, guys. What, we have like yesterday, Saturday being like lovely weather and like the rest of the weekend just sucks. Well, since we're staying inside today, clearly I'm going to be doing a substantial amount of cooking. <sighs> Starting with breakfast, right? Okay, so I'm doing like a big huge pot frittata. I know, eggs, but listen, here's the thing about eggs, okay? The protein is fantastic. The, uh, the way we're going to load it up with veg is absolutely fantastic. I am making bacon, or as my... Let's see if we can do something about this lighting, shall we? All right, forgive me, my friends. Again, I am working with new technology. Um, Pixel 3 let me down, my storage is full. And Amazon swears my tripod is coming. All right, so uh, I, I am using real, well, real bacon. I mean, reduced sodium and so forth, but I am using, I've already washed all my veg, guys. I'm just scraping up my teeth. Um, yeah, I'm using real bacon. That's, you know, don't often use bacon because of the, uh, fat content, but the little people voted they wanted bacon, or as they call it, they wanted bacon. So, bacon is what I'm making. <laughs> yeah, I'm even mad at myself for saying that. Alright, so I am literally just slicing up some peppers here. I'm going to dice them nice and fine. Uh, so I have one bell pepper. Now, this is a, a kind of a fun dish because the beauty of this dish is you can come down and look in your fridge and be like, hmm, what do I got? What do I want to use? What needs to go? And what I've got and what I want to use, I'm using one bell pepper. I'm using about, well, it was a handful, so I'd say about eight asparagus that I literally just diced up nice and small, much the same as the peppers here. Uh, I had mu way more mushrooms than what I currently have on my board, but little people have come in and eaten them. So, what do I got? I have seven mushrooms, I would have had eight, whatever. Whatever, you know, whatever you want. There's no like, oh my gosh, you said seven mushrooms and I only have four. Put in what you want to put in. It's gonna taste delicious. Now, um, I am gonna be using my Curtis Stone pan, so I'm not going to be adding in any fat. If you don't have Curtis Stone pans, you are going to be adding in fat. You're gonna be adding in butter or margarine and or olive oil, depending on which you prefer, okay? Keep that in mind. If you don't have a Curtis Steel pan, and you don't put fat in, you will burn and stick and ruin your pans and then come at me and I don't, I don't know how to help you at some point. So please, use fat if you don't have a Curtis Stone pan. The reason I use a Curtis Stone pan is because I had gastric bypass and it reduces my, my caloric intake. So my, my bacon's screaming at me. Hang on. Okay, so I'm also using a zucchini. So cut the ends off and then I'm... Ah! Oh man, are y'all okay? I dropped you. That's so rude of me. I apologize. Alright, new technology guys and tripod, I swear to God, is coming. Unless Amazon just likes lying to me. So I've cut the ends off, okay? And I'm cutting it in three. And then from there, I'm going to cut strips of three, and then just a dice. Okay guys? Just like that. So I'm going to 
go ahead and get this cut. I'm also using a half a tomato because I don't need it for my menu for the next two days. Um, and I don't want it to go bad. I'm going to cut up a shallot and two cloves of garlic. Correction, two cloves of garlic. Yes, that's for you. But for me, when you open up your thing of garlic, like, like seriously, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it because I think people think that I'm crazy. And like legit, you know, I'll give you that. But no, when I'm talking about like this stuff, Oh, please be careful with your knife work, guys. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't think I've, I really cut myself. I more burn myself in the kitchen. This is one thing of garlic. That's one clove. That's bigger than my nose. So, two cloves of garlic finely chopped. Let's get all our veg prep done. Alright, so with a tablespoon and a half of olive oil, I've got the shallots, and if you don't want to use shallots, use onion, um, and two cloves of garlic, or one monstrous. They're nice and soft, so at this point I'm going to add in all of my veg. I don't have my tripod, so I'm going to put you down so I can do it, or else it'll just, it'll be everywhere. Alright. It's a little bit like a hot mess, so we're going to season with probably a teaspoon of salt and pepper. I know it seems excessive. I'm just going to do it in stages so I can continuously add. Um, it seems excessive, but this is essentially the flavoring for our entire dish, right? So maybe half a teaspoon to start. Okay, turn it up. And I just want to get these all nice and sauteed. Now, yeah, I'm also going to be adding about a cup of spinach. Remember, the cup of spinach is going to wilt down into nothingness, and, and so is this. Um, I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees, because once I get my eggs all beaten um, with a tiny little bit of salt and pepper, I'm going to crumble in some feta cheese into my eggs, and then I'm just going to pour my eggs in here, remove from the heat first, pour my eggs in here, so we're using a lot of eggs, okay, and then I'm going to put a lid on it, and I'm going to throw it in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then she's done, that's it, you want to make some toast, you want some brioche, some pala bread, um, some crescent rolls, well that might not actually be a bad idea, crescent rolls. I'll have to see what I got in the fridge. Uh, I got a ton of bagels. I'm going to opt for a half of a whole wheat pita, but your choice. So we're going to let these go for about five to seven minutes on high. Um, wash them, stir them, but you want all the vegetables that have the water content, so like the zucchini and the mushrooms, to kind of dissipate and all that water to go before we're going to add in the spinach. And the spinach is going to be like 30 seconds, right? It's not going to take very long. If you want to chop up the spinach to get it nice and fine. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. To throw in so you have little beans of spinach, not huge ones, cool beans. But we'll, we'll come back when we're at that stage. Okay, so our veg is looking nice. She's almost there, but there is some liquid still. At this point, I want to add in the spinach, which are also going to give off some liquid. It's literally a very rough, very rustic chop, right? Some pieces are bigger than others. I'm fine with that. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seasoned it any further, so I will at this point, now that I'm, I made a mess. And this is how I burn myself all the time. I'm not really scared of cutting myself in the kitchen. I mean, that is a fear, I guess, for everybody, but I burn the crap out of myself all the time. All right, so I'm just gonna do a little light salt and pepper. Obviously, probably heavier on the pepper. Y'all know me. I like the pepper. Okay, now I'll turn it up just a little higher. And this is a dish that, um, I mean, this is at least the base of a dish that I do when I do like egg muffins, when I've got the in-laws over. Um, 
it's a little bit of a fancier dish, you know, just because it's so bright and colorful and very fresh and it's very, very yummy. And the feta cheese really, really sets this dish over the top. Oh, thank you, Mr. Oven. Um, so we're going to turn this up high because I want all the liquid to now be gone, okay? I want every, the liquid to be gone. I want some caramelization to start to happen. So when the liquid's gone and things are starting to get a little crispy and brown, just ever so slightly, it's good to go and remove from the heat. So now we're going to go over and get our eggs ready. I'm going to say six to eight eggs. Let's start with six and we'll see what our volume looks like. Okay, so I went with eight eggs. Um, Go broke, right? Why not? So I'm going to add in about a quarter cup of milk. And then I'm going to whisk these to just kind of break them up. And as I'm doing so, I'm going to just add in some salt and pepper, probably about a half a teaspoon of each. What's your favorite kind of Egg. Are you a scrambled? Are you a toad in the hole? Are you a poached? <gasps> Eggs Benny, man. When, um, before my gastric bypass, Eggs Benny was like my jam. <laughs> I loved me some Eggs Benny, but like legit had to be from like one place. It was this restaurant that I don't think it's called that anymore. At least it's under way different management, but it was like the 50s place or 50s diner or it's I don't know, I know there's probably like 150s diners all across Ontario, but uh, anyways, I loved it, I thought they were fantastic. So you want to beat these really, really well, okay, incorporate everything, oh that's not the black pepper, you know me, I like my black pepper, and then what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to crumble in some feta. Don't make a mess. Oh. Yes. Oh, there's two logs in here. There wasn't supposed to be. Yay! So, I'm going to take like a half the half of the round cylinder here. Okay, so like a quarter cup of feta. And I'm literally just going to crumble it in I know, salt, 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 but honestly, with all the other veg and everything, it adds a really nice uh, flavor, and it's going to cook very nicely in the eggs, and it'll be a lovely pop when you get that bite. Honestly, I'm pretty sure, unless my, my mother-in-law is being overly generous to me when she eats it, but she loves it, um, so I mean, it's going to be somewhat good, right? got really, really high standards. She has an amazing palate. Okay, so once that's in there, I'm just going to give it a real good mix, making sure everything is incorporated properly. Now, because our oven is preheated to 375 degrees and because our vegetables are still hot, right, because we just finished them not too long ago, we want to get everything ready so as soon as we put in the eggs, we can put the lid on. Oh, I did make a mess. All right, how many times you see flowers? Comment, how many times you see flowers? Uh, okay. We don't want the eggs to scramble in the hot veg. So we're going to work really quickly. We're gonna get everything ready so that I can legit put my lid on and throw it in the oven. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So our eggs are going to go in, okay, we're just going to mix it around slightly so that eggs touch all surfaces, okay, so it's going to bake up really nice and lovely. Briefly. In the oven she goes for 10 to 15 minutes. We'll see you soon. 
Okay guys, first of all, I used eight eggs, which is more than I've ever used in doing my recipe. So I ended up turning up the heat to 400 and letting it go for a full half hour. I also want to mention that this stove is weak. The recipes that I am accustomed to, I always do in my countertop oven, which Jai did. I did order the Curtis Stone um, countertop oven, but it's not here yet. So, I let it go for about a half hour. It looks awesome. It smells amazing. Oh my gosh. continue to cover it and just take it out of the oven and let it sit here for five minutes before I do anything with it when I put it on a plate. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll record that because I am going to make a hot mess in, in doing it, but we'll come back. Alright, so if I had done this in, his, in my frying pan, my oven safe frying pan, uh, I could have just wiggled it out onto the plate, but because I did it in a pot, not so much. Okay, so I totally just did the flip. And this is how I burn myself. Everybody, look at that. Came out completely beautiful and wonderful. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. Let's take a look. New technology, not sure. Or, all right. Wow, look at that. Doesn't she look pretty? Okay, that's, that's a small knife. All right, let's, let's give her a slice. Six people very comfortably in this. I did make it large so that I can put the leftovers. So I can put the leftovers once they're cool in the Tupperware, so that uh, tomorrow I don't have to worry about making my lunch. I can just kind of reheat this. like a little quiche. It's not lovely. It is big over there. And what did I set aside for him? Three pieces of bacon because yeah my little one totally Yep, because my little one totally got into all the, the making and he's just asking for more again. So there's my husband's plate. Now let's break this down from a cost perspective. I did use eight eggs, and if you're buying a dozen eggs, they're what, $3? So we use two thirds, so $2. The vegetables, probably about $2. The cheese amount, so wait, what did we say? Two and two, so for the cheese amount, probably about $1.50. So what we at, $5.50. Now when I have a lot of people over for a big brunch, this is uh, usually a dish that I do. I usually do this in muffins because it's a really nice presentation, but this is a really nice presentation also. So let's give her a try. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, it's yummy. Oh man. 
all the vegetables work really lovely together. And the thing about it is you can add whatever veg you really want, right? You can do it to your preference. It's a really nice dish when you have people over. So let's hope COVID-19 restrictions are lifted soon because I'd love to have you guys over for a wonderful brunch. Put this with some OJ, maybe a mimosa. Hey. You know, um, some, some turkey bacon, some bacon. Uh, what's also really good with this is like some sort of fruit and baked dish. So uh, my banana bread would be absolutely spectacular. I'll link the description for the banana bread below. Um, and ooh, my lemon blueberry cake as well. <gasps> that's to die for. That's, a, that's an upcoming video. All right, guys. If you liked my content, please give me a like, share, uh, subscribe, and as always, enjoy.